This training video overviews the H5A thermal camera installation. The installation guide can be downloaded from the Avigilon website. Important safety information is detailed in the installation guide. Ensure the camera package contains the camera, a junction box, four screws for attaching to an electrical box, a mounting template sticker, a solid wall accessories kit, Teflon tape, a protective rubber boot for the ethernet port, and a T20 driver. To begin, use the mounting template to drill four mounting holes into the mounting surface. Next, drill the cable entry hole into the mounting surface. Pull the required cables through the cable entry hole. Hammer the supplied plastic anchors into the holes. Fasten the junction box to the mounting surface. It's recommended that the silicone be applied around the edge of the junction box to prevent moisture from entering the mounting surface. Insert the mounting hooks on the rear of the camera into the slots on the junction box, then let the camera hang. In the next segment, the steps to connect the required cables are reviewed. Before connecting any cables, ensure that the cable connections are adequately protected from moisture and corrosion. If external input or output devices need to be connected to the camera, connect the devices to the camera's digital I.O. connector cables. If an external microphone and speakers need to be connected to the camera, connect the devices to the camera's audio I.O. cables. Ensure the protective cable boot is installed over the Ethernet port to protect the connection from dust and moisture. To install the protective cable boot, remove the pre-installed boot over the Ethernet port. Next, thread one end of the Ethernet cable through it. Note the orientation of the cable and the boot. Crimp the Ethernet cable. Use one of the following methods to connect power to the camera. If power over Ethernet is available, the camera LEDs will turn on. Or, if using external power, connect an auxiliary power source. Be careful not to connect power to the audio input cable. Doing so will permanently damage the camera. Both the audio input cable and auxiliary power cable are brown. The auxiliary power cable has a thicker gauge and is labeled. Next, connect a network cable to the ethernet port. Once the cable is connected to the camera, slide the boot over the ethernet port. Check that the connection status LED indicator indicates the correct state. Tuck any excessive cables into the cable entry hole. Raise the camera until it covers the junction box. Once all the cable connections have been made, secure the camera to the junction box. Next, use the camera mounting screws to fasten the camera to the box. This completes the steps to mount the camera to the junction box. To access the configuration panel, use a T20 driver to unscrew the panel cover. The link LED indicator will turn on once a network link has been established. Highlighted here is the micro USB port which accepts a micro USB to USB adapter. This adapter is only required when using a USB Wi-Fi adapter. Attach the adapter to the camera's micro USB port to access the camera's mobile web interface. Refer to the specific training video on this topic. In the next segment, configuring the optional onboard storage is reviewed. It is recommended that the micro SD card have a capacity of eight gigabytes or more and a write speed of class six or better. If the card does not meet the recommended capacity or write speed, it may lose frames or footage and affect overall performance. Do not force the card into the camera or the card and camera may be damaged. The SD card can only be inserted in one direction. Insert an SD card into the camera. Next, access the camera's web interface to enable the onboard storage feature. For specific information on the camera's web interface, consult the Avigilon High Definition and IP Camera Web Interface User Guide. The user guide can be accessed on the Avigilon website. If the camera no longer functions as expected, reset it to its factory default settings. For models with an SD card slot, resetting the camera will not affect the video recorded to the SD card. Use the firmware revert button to reset the device. Ensure the camera is powered on. Using a straightened paper clip or similar tool, gently press and hold the firmware revert button for three seconds. Do not apply excessive force Inserting the tool too far may damage the camera. To aim the camera, loosen the adjustment screws on the camera mount arm. Next, rotate and move the camera and mount arm as required. Check the camera's live video stream to help aim the camera correctly. Next, tighten the adjustment screws on the mount arm to secure the camera's position. In the camera web browser interface or the Avigilon software, Adjust the camera's image and display settings and the image rotation. The adjustable sun shroud helps protect the lens against glare from the sun. 
The sun shroud may be removed when the camera is installed indoors or in areas with limited space. Use a T20 driver to unscrew and remove the shroud from the camera. Loosen the adjustment screw on the camera to turn the camera body. If the camera is turned sideways to look vertically at a scene, remove the sun shroud, then reinstall it to cover the camera's new angle of view. To reinstall the shroud, use the T20 driver to screw on the shroud. This completes the installation steps of the H5A thermal camera. For specific information on the camera, consult the H5A thermal camera user guide. The user guide can be accessed on the Evigilon website.